Hi, I'm Arlene. I'm host of the television talk show, Ask Arlene, which airs on Thursdays at 6.30. And the, this is our mastermind group. And the purpose of the mastermind group is for us to come together and to create one mind, to overcome our fears, get unstuck, live our best lives, and to work together to create and find answers and solutions to the different challenges that are out there. And the idea is that Napoleon Hill said, when you start out with two people on a mastermind, actually those two people create a third mind, in which case we are so much more enlightened and illuminated from this process than if we were just to use our own minds and think our own thoughts. So um, a couple of years ago, how did I get started? A couple of years ago, I was stuck because my mom passed away and she passed away from an incurable disease. I watched her go and it was very challenging for me and I was stuck. And just before that, I had lost a major job. I was Chamber of Commerce president uh, for a job where I had been recruited to go across the country and work. And shortly thereafter, the board of directors changed and they did not want me as their Chamber of Commerce president and I was really stuck. So I had to begin looking for tools, techniques, ways to help me to move forward and get out of that structure of being stuck. And one of the things that I found that was very helpful was coaching. I found life coaching. I found um, talking to a therapist. I found um, this wonderful group of people who are interested in helping people to move forward and make change. And so we're here to in that same vein. So we're going to start one by sharing who we are and what we do in the world. We're going to ask that everybody on the mastermind be respectful of other people's time. So we share and then we listen. And this is not the Arlene McLaren show, although I do have an Arlene McLaren show where I get to talk. So it's not the show for any one person. It's the mastermind group so that we can all share and hear and be heard and learn and grow and glean from each other's wisdom. And as we're on, other people are joining on with us internationally and we'll have other people that sign on to the group here live and will be participating with us. So let's begin. I shared who I am and I'm gonna ask Dr. Kim, why don't you tell us who you are and what you do in the world and how you've come to this mastermind work. Okay, well, I am Dr. Kim Nicholson and I am a mental health therapist. I work predominantly with adolescents and young adults, although I do work with older adults as well and a few kids here and there. And my message that I'm trying to promote on my own is uh, mental health promotion and intentionally, people intentionally taking time to promote their own men mental health. So I do have a nonprofit organization called Intentional Mental Health. It just, I I just got a notification the other day that it's been become nonprofit. I had to go through that process. So I think it's nonprofit. <laughs> I think we're there. But every time I think I've got it, they're like, oh, now jump through this. Hoop. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, but yeah, so my my message is intention is in, in intentional mental health and for people to start really taking the time to to, to invest in their own mental health and and just grow beautiful. That's, that's it. beautiful thank you so much for the work that you're doing in the world and for this venture where you're helping people to move forward mentally and helping us to understand the importance of our mental health because there's such a stigma these days about mental health and that you know those people as opposed to us <laughs> exactly exactly one of the things is they say like a certain percentage of adults struggle with mental illness, but I say, I do say 100% of us struggle with mental health. Mental health is not just the absence of mental illness, so much more than that. And we all 100% struggle with it, either at one time or another, or just every day maintaining it and, and, and seeing to it, so. Beautiful, beautiful, thank you. Ron, who are you and what do you do in the world? Thanks, Arlene, and I love your show. And, and, and what I love about it is, 
You know, I'm sitting in South Africa in the, in the lovely city of Cape Town, 600 meters away from the beach and every morning go to my office and I'm in, a, in the property game now and I just look at this wonderful scenery of Table Mountain and just looking out over the ocean. To live and to have fun and not just to have to live to make a living now what is important what i'm saying yeah is as you know three weeks ago i'll say now it was a month ago when we had those bad riots in in durban and i lost everything and i had to pack my car and i said that's enough pack my car whatever i got put it in my car and i came to to Durban, to Cape Town. And this is a bit about my little story where I'm going. It's because we've all got a journey to do and every journey we have to follow. We cannot look what happened yesterday because we cannot take it with us tomorrow because whatever happened yesterday and we take it with, we might have the next 20 years going forward, also having bad experiences. That's why we have to live for today and change our way of going forward. And why I'm mentioning this is helping people to find their desire in what they want to achieve uh, and working with people to make business work. And as you know, with a couple of people we've mentored together, Arlene, with your team of understanding how to bring their businesses into different mastermind groups, like poets, musicians, and entrepreneurs. Yes. This is what we do. This is what I do and help people to work with, but also to help him to understand how to work with social mark, uh, working with in the social marketing sphere by applying the Lord approach, location, occupation, recreation, and dream to make business work. And since the last two years, you and I have been working together and now also with Dr. Kim, I feel it's an awesome platform to help everybody in the world by just applying this simple little things, by being part of a mastermind, by creating that third and fourth mind to make their business work and having accountability partners. So thank you, Ali. You are welcome. You are welcome. So um, I'm sorry to hear about your loss and uh, it was rioters that caused you yes. to have the, the disaster? Yes, I just, sold, uh, no, I just sold my property and I moved to the mother-in-law's because I wasn't sure where I was going. And we had two weeks, of, uh, three days of riots and they went into the storage unit where all my furniture was and they just burnt everything. I mean, there was about, I think 2000, Shops, couple of shopping centers burnt down, rioting. Um, I would I reckon there's about 150,000 people that lost their jobs through this. That's but you know what? It's terrible. It's, it's, it is, it's okay. You, I mean, we just have to look forward. We cannot worry what happened yesterday. All we have to do is focus on now and see how we can help other people through tri uh, troubled times. So the and riots were because of the... Um... Why were they riots? Uh, just for the fun of it, because the ex-president uh, uh, went to jail. So they decided to, to riot. Okay. All right. But, so, um, but I'm not, I'm not going to go into that. Yeah, what yeah. What I'm saying is, that it's, as I say, is we're all going through some form of um, trouble through COVID, through job losses, you know. But if you join a team like ours, which empowers and encourages we can change people's minds and live the life that we want to have. And wonderful, have fun at this wonderful, time. wonderful. And that is what we're all about. The goal is to empower ourselves to move forward and get unstuck and live our best lives. So um, once again, I'm sorry to hear about your situation, Ron. And I applaud you that even though you've gone through this challenge, even though you're in the midst of the challenge, here you are online, you know, ready to go, ready to discuss with us, to mastermind with us. I don't know where I would be 
<laughs> if something like this happened to me, I don't know it, where I would be. I can't swear that, you know, I'd be that strong to still, you know, be here talking with you about, you know, this process. So I commend you. And um, I mean, I, 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 I commend you. I don't know. That's like otherworldly strength. Uh, that being said, one of the things that we do is we also ask everybody to be an accountability partner. So we share with each other what it is that we're doing in the world. And then we say one of the things that we're gonna accomplish this week as we move on. And so we're gonna share that before the time is up within the hour. But the focus today is about this concept of, and it's ironic that you have gone through it, I mean, with the riots, but this concept of COVID-19 and people being afraid and us not moving forward. And so I'm throwing it out to the mastermind. We have part two of COVID-19. So in 2020, we were all indoors, everybody was inside hiding. And now we have the opportunity to go outside. But if you watch the news, you're still hearing that so many people are passing away. And instead of the numbers going down, which is what's supposed to be happening, that actually the numbers are going the opposite direction. They say, because the schools are open now, gradually the number of little kids who are passing away as well is going up. So I did a show and I said, one of the things that we need to do is unplug because to constantly watch the fact that so many people are dying is not going to be the best for our mindset. And so one of the things that we need to focus on is health and healing and, and prosperity and our project, you know, keeping our eyes on the prize as far as what we're doing in our business or our project or our endeavor. And as long as we're focusing on that TV set and the death and dying report. Hello, Dennis. It's a pleasure for you to join us. We're glad to have you. We can't see you, but we see your name there. Hello. Turn yes, your camera uh, around so we don't yes, see that yes. spot. Turn your camera around. I All know right. you have a different way of, of showing it. Yes. Pleasure to have you. Beautiful. Well, thank you. Beautiful. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> okay. So as I was saying, we need to unplug as one thing, one area, and also keep our eyes on the prize, like have a a project or a venture like Dr. Kim has her her um, intentional mental health business that she is moving forward with. Ron is moving forward th with the expansion of his business, marketing and bringing people in, whether it be with the um, cryptocurrency or it be in terms of the mastermind groups, because he's partnering with me in that. And then Dennis has his poetry that he's moving forward with. So I'm asking you to share what are some things that people should be doing now in order to expand their projects and ventures and not be focused on the death and dying report? And I'm gonna start with anybody who wants to share. Pauline, can I maybe just tell a story if you don't mind? Yes, you may. I wanna go back to 2015. And I was, and I said, anybody over the age of 50 must go for a, for a colonoscopy. So I went and I was still under anesthetic and the doctor taps me on the shoulder and says, look on my new Samsung cell phone, you've, you've got a tumor in your colon. Ooh. And I said, cool doctor. And I'm still in the days, in a bit of a day. Yes. And I said, cool doctor. Oh, and, yes. and what actually happened is my daughter came to sit next to me, my wife, and she said to me, what did the doctor say? And the doctor says, well, Excuse me, excuse me, can we have the sound is muted? Oh, your not Just mute, Dennis. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Okay, sorry, Dennis. So anyway, my, my wife sat next to me and says, what did the doctor say? says, I've got a tumor. And all of a sudden, all that, the horrible feelings came through. But... A long story short, I went to church and they, the church uh, on Christmas, they gave me an anchor. And the reason why I'm mentioning this is because who's your anchor in life? But I said, I'm going to go to on holiday first with my family. I said, because that's not going to get me down. But yes, it played a lot of mind, yeah, kind of, um, mind games with me. Because every time you think of something, you go into a different state of mind. 
But what is important is, yes, I went for the operation. They cut 450 mils out of my, my colon, and I'm okay at the moment. But how does it relate to COVID? You see, the problem comes in, we all focus on the negativity. And the, the, the anchor that, that I got was purely telling me the burdens we carry. The boat is the vessel because a ship was never built for the harbor. It was built for the open sea. COVID is the same thing. We have to sail the open sea. doesn't matter how rough it is. We need to drop down the burdens, which is the anchor. So even we lost your job, doesn't matter if you lost a, a member. I mean, I just lost two family members with COVID three weeks ago. But we still have to live the life we want to live. Focus on what we want to focus on. If you want to be your poet, do your poetry. Do it to the best of your ability. Live for today to make it happen. Get an accountability partner as what we've got here to look at the wins and challenges and overcome that fear of making a difference in somebody's life. So if you make a difference in somebody else's life, it will start changing your life going forward. Thank you, Arlene. Beautiful, beautiful. If we can make a difference in other people's lives, then it will start changing our lives. And Ron, you're definitely making a difference in people's lives um, in terms of the marketing of the business and being an accountability partner and also in terms of building your team. And now I understand too why you are as giving as you are because you just shared that you've had near death experience where you you know, we're able to come back and, and be with us. And what I find is that whenever we experience, you know, these kinds of traumas, and I've not experienced it, so I'm not saying it from personal experience, but whenever we experience these kinds of things, then we come back stronger and we come back more focused in terms of the expansion of our purpose here in the world. So um, at the risk of sounding, you know, cliche, I'm sorry that you had that experience, but these are the experiences that make us more diligent in our journey here at expanding our work. So um, for those of you that just signed on, hello, Lady Kasha. It's a pleasure to have Hi, you Kasha. today. I'm going to make you co-host so that you can allow other people to come in. And um, it's a pleasure to see you, Dennis. Kasha, can you tell people where you are and what your project is since you were not here before? Just tell us what you do in the world briefly. And then. So my first thing I do in, in on this planet Earth is I'm being happy. And my <laughs> name is Kasia. I'm from Poland. Uh, I'm, I'm um, you know, born in Poland, but uh, currently living in Washington state in, in the United States. And um, my mission is to make sure that people can, uh, you know, uh, realize that their life uh, is worth of design being designed by every single person. So whatever, you know, Ron was also saying that uh, we are, uh, we are, we need to do things that we are here on this planet to do. Like if you are painting, go paint. If you are writing, go write or whatever. If you are singing, go sing. Do all of those things because, uh, because if this is your mission, this is the most important and the most powerful thing for you, for your soul, for your existence. And you, you can make your own magic every day, every day. And you can find happiness every day in so many things around you, inside of your house, around of your house. Um, perhaps sometimes the blue sky could be a reason to be happy. And, uh, and the flowers around the house, they could make you happy. Just go and look for those things because most often people don't see those things that they are, they are food for our soul and and I, that's why I'm here. And I'm so happy that I am a part of this beautiful project. And I'm so happy to help some people to overcome the shite and flush the shite 
from the storylines from the past. So I guess that's um, that's the most important that I'm supposed to share today, I guess. Thank you so much. Thank you for what you do in the world. Thank you for the way that you help people to get rid of their shite, as you say. And thank you for the way that you've helped me too. I've attended your sessions and it's been most helpful. So thank you from a personal perspective. And um, Dennis, introduce yourself. Tell us who you are and what you do in the world. <clears throat> well, hi everybody at Noble Goldman Group. Um, my name is Dennis Fragans and uh, I'm a poet. I'm an aspiring uh, author and everything. And my goal is to crack the code, which is the combination to one's cognitive thinking and have them to recognize life traps and schemas and not have to perform them. Oh, how succinct, how well said. I have observed Dennis and the presentation now from the former presentation, I can tell that you have like really worked on your presentation and now it's like a succinct presentation. So I applaud you on that and I applaud you as well on the work that you're doing in the world as far as your poetry. We need poets. We need people who are able to verbalize things in short, succinct and interesting ways as opposed to always the you know long drawn out manuscript. So what you're doing is valuable. Okay, so back to the matter at hand. We've got like 20 minutes left, eh, 25 minutes left. So what we're talking about for those of you that have just signed on is the fact that although we have COVID-19 going on, what are the things that we're doing? Tools, techniques, methodologies that we can use to stay on track, to move forward and to not focus on some of the negativisms that we're seeing on television about children dying, which I don't know what's worse than children dying or, um, adults dying, people passing away. And instead of it going down, it seems like the numbers are going up and we're just being bombarded more and more by this on television. So I said, one of the things that we should do is one, disconnect uh, and not watch TV at all. Another thing, tool te technique that is suggested is that we should endeavor to be creative. Everybody should have a creative project or uh, some venture that we're working on so that we can be focused on our project or our venture as opposed to focusing on the things that are going on that are not illuminating us, not lifting us up, not causing us to move forward. Um, also, another tool or technique is to focus, <laughs> focus on what's ahead of us, as opposed to focusing on what's behind. And I know this is particularly, particularly challenging for people who have lost loved ones. I'm not being insensitive, because I've lost a loved one. I lost my mom, not to COVID-19. But I know how I felt when people would say to me, don't focus on, you know, the death of your mom, you have to look to the future. But now I do understand where they're coming from in terms of how if I am to move forward and be empowered and do the work that we're here to work, I almost have to focus on the forward and not focus on the past. Okay, so I'm gonna um, start with Dr. Kim and let you share. Um, how do you feel we should move forward and get unstuck and, and realize our dreams? Well, I love, I love that you said be creative and find a creative pastime and, or, or something, a project to work on. And what I often tell people also, but besides disconnecting, I mean, it's, it's important to be informed. Mm -hmm. um, but I also say, you know, find, identify your high yielding activities. And those are activities that when you've, when you've partaken in it, whatever it happens to be, that you feel empowered or you feel strong. It's like, I have, I have two sons and they watch TikTok videos like all the time. So one day I said, oh, let me see these videos. And I turned on my phone and I watched the TikTok. And then like four hours later, I was like, what just happened to me? Because I just got <laughs> sucked in to these videos, which are phenomenal and <laughs> funny. And you're like, okay, just one more, just one more. And four hours, I was like, oh, I even looked at my kids. I was like, what did you do? The Take this away. But so it was fun and enjoyable. And, you know, there's a time and a place for everything, but it wasn't overly high yielding. I learned, I learned a few things, but then there's other activities that I engage in that I feel like I've accomplished something, but it's also kind of feeding my soul at the same time. And it's like, once you have identified those activities that are more high yielding, that make you feel good about yourself, but also, I don't know, they're just, they just kind of 
like refill your bucket, I like to say. It's nice to have almost like a list of these high yielding activities. And sometimes actually with clients too, it's like even sometimes it's just, a, if it's something you do for a couple of minutes, I have them make like a jar and little pieces of paper. And if they feel stuck, just pick out a piece of paper and it says, oh, go for a walk. So for, for the next 10 minutes, that's what you're going to do or paint or draw or friendship bracelets or macrame or whatever those things are. It's like when you're in that moment, you're just like feeling kind of lost. You just, you know, either we create spinners sometimes where you spin the little thing or just pull out a little piece of paper and whatever it tells you to do, you do it. And it's just kind of ways to kind of restart and identify those things. But I like, I do like the, the focusing forward, although it is, it is hard, especially when you've had a recent loss. Um, but and the creativity, and then I would add to that, you know, creative activities or things that are high yielding and, and use those to kind of get yourself unstuck when you find yourself kind of either worrying or shut down or just stuck. Thank you so much. That was awesome, Dr. Kim. That's why we're so pleased that you're here with us. <laughs> um, I like what you, I like the fact that you said these activities need to be high yielding, but at the same time, you were saying even just the spinners, like even just, is it like a distraction? Is that the idea just to? Yeah, sometimes and one, you know, so one of the things I work with a lot is emotion dysregulation and distress tolerance. And sometimes we're in situations where it's like these activities are really good for a moment of distress tolerance. Cause sometimes when we're really distressed, distress tolerance, the, the focus there is to not make the situation worse. So it's like when we're distressed, we, like, we want to fix things, but sometimes it's, it's, it's a lot to explain at once, but it's like, rather than, Oh, I'm going to win. I'm going to accomplish something. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. It's more like, I'm just going to get through right now, this moment without making it worse. You know, imagine like, you know, you're in an argument with your boss and you're starting to feel yourself becoming upset. You need to just shut that down for a minute. It's like, how do I get through this moment without making it worse? That's the only goal. So that's where, you know, if you can pull away and either, you know, find something to do, distract for 10 minutes until you're kind of emotionally regulated again and you can proceed forward. So if you find yourself, say, feeling anxious, like I know with COVID, there's a lot of anxiety right there, a lot of free floating anxiety. And you feel yourself like getting to that point where you're like, oh, here we go. It's like, that's when you do one of these activities. Like you just, you just, and there, you ask yourself three questions. You ask yourself, is this a problem I can solve right now? Is this a problem that is even mine to solve? And then we say, it, am I in wise mind enough to solve the problem right now? And wise mind is kind of like, am I balanced between thinking rationally and emotionally oftentimes we find ourselves in this emotional place and if we're in a really highly emotional situation it or moment it's not always a good time to try to solve a problem or even say move forward or try to engage in you know your work it might be okay i got to get myself back into wise mind first then i can move forward and that's where you pick one of the little pieces of paper go for a walk do a word search puzzle um, some crochet knitting some of those things and just for 10 minutes and then what you're doing is you're 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 changing your brain chemistry in that moment to pull it away from the upsetting emotions get you back closer to like i guess equilibrium and then go ahead and try to move forward again beautiful but that that pause is is powerful so the three questions that we ask ourselves is is the problem is this a problem that I can solve now? Mm -hmm. Is this my problem? To solve. Mm -hmm. To solve. And what was the third question? Am I in wise mind enough to solve the problem? So basically, if you're feeling really emotional, and if, if the answer is yes to all three, solve the problem. Do it. If the answer is no to any one of those three, do practice distress tolerance, one of those little pieces of paper. That's what we do. And so if it's like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, this is my problem and it is something I can solve right now, but I am not in wise mind. I am really emotional right now. You got to balance that out first. So that's when you pause, calm it down. Because if you try to solve it when you're emotional, that's when you make things worse. And don't get me wrong. I have done that 
many times. And even now, like I know better. And afterwards I'm like, ah, oh, I can, <laughs> but you know, but the, the first step is get yourself back. Then you can try to solve the problem or solve Beautiful. the problem. Beautiful. And like, if we're talking about the situation that all of us are dealing with and with COVID-19, it's really not our problem to solve. So, I mean, yes, it's distressing that people are passing away, that children are, are dying, but how can I resolve that? Well, ensure that my family is social distancing, you know, when it's a situation to wear a mask, we wear a mask, but really it's not my job to fix it. So I think that's really key. Right. Um, and right. as I said, take our minds off of focusing on it 24 seven, because it's not something that we can change. It's not something that we can really shift. So focusing on it and watching the 10,000 kids dying is not really going to enhance our business or our project or our venture. It's just gonna make us feel down and, and even worse. And right. out of that creative mindset that we need in order to grow and, and spring forward. And also the more we grow and spring forward with all of these wonderful ventures and projects, whether it's Kasha's project or Dennis's poetry or yours, the more we can fix the world and the more we can contribute. contribute. Yes. That's it. Yeah. I heard you go in there and I was like, there it is. Here it comes. Here it comes. And then you did it. I was like, yeah. fix the I world. Myself right now before. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, Oli, uh, I know. Oli, can, I, can I just say something? Certainly. We're asking that everybody, you know, whenever you want to speak, just raise your hand and I'll see your comments. I'll see you raising your hand and then I'll acknowledge you. So go ahead, um, Ron. Um, you know, you mentioned of the people with COVID and people dying. Now, I was speaking to my local doctor uh, about three months ago with COVID. It says there's more people dying from heart attacks and other diseases because they're too scared to go to the doctor because of COVID. Because they don't checking their, they're not checking their blood pressure, they're not checking their sugar levels, they're not checking their cholesterols. So sometimes is the fear of going to the doctor for your symptoms, and this is where one of the things are coming in is don't let COVID come in and change your mindset. Just be be you, and if you feel as Dr. Kim said. Do those three things or put music on. I've, I've found lots of times when when I went into a dark place, even with a, a cancer and stuff like that, all I've done is I put music on uh, Tina Turner. I'm simply the best and start singing to it. You'll see how, how it starts changing your mindset. Music makes a big difference. I mean, even with poetry, I mean, it can make a big difference. How are you going to say it? So I'm just saying is. Don't fear what, what COVID is doing. Just see what you can accomplish in your own, own way. Just live for the moment. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well said. Thank you for sharing that. Live for the moment. Look at what you can accomplish in your project or venture and stop trying to change the, as Dr. Kim said, change the thing that we cannot change which is the whole COVID situation. So um, we have Ambassador Marsha Domingo on with us. And Ambassador Marsha is from Abu Dhabi. And so we'd love for her to sign on as well. Um, we can see that you're there, but we cannot hear you. Marsha, do you wanna weigh in? Do you wanna share anything as far as this goes? What you yes. do in order to- Hi. Hi. Good, good evening, everybody. Um, what an interesting topic. Um, um, it's great to see everybody. Um, I've been tuning in um, and I love the, um, the, the, the tools that Dr. Kim is provided, has provided. Um, and, and that's what it is, tools. Um, I think firstly, um, thank you. It's great to come on to the mastermind again. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, I think um, if, if I could contribute 
one more aspect, the whole thing when it comes to COVID um, and, and just the whole communication system around the whole thing is they are really just communicating to our senses. They're communicating to our senses. So what we see, what we hear, what we touch, what we feel, and the way we speak, these are our physical senses. And so if we don't guard what we hear, what we see, what we speak, what we touch, it's almost inevitable that you will create the environment conducive for fear to thrive. Mm. Right? So what do you want? The question is, what do you want? I want peace. I want joy. I want my faith to grow. I want to be confident. So what are the things that I need that will help me build my faith in what I see? Maybe I really don't want to see the news with all these headlines every week. I don't want to. Then change the channel. Simple. I don't want to hear the news. Change, change it. That's it. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to hear. Um, you are not being ignorant. It's just by choice. It's your choice. You are choosing, and that cho being able to choose is that is the point of empowerment. That is the point of empowerment. Having the ability to choose, because if you don't have the ability to choose. There is no empowerment. So for me, when it comes to that, and that's um, what I do stand for and what I believe is that having the ability to choose is the first place of empowerment. If you don't have that, there is no peace. There is no freedom of choice. So, I mean, we can speak English the whole night, but have the ability to choose. We can speak like, you know, share all these beautiful insights, but choose. Which one do you want to choose? Are you going to choose to put into practice what the mastermind has provided for growth? Mm -hmm. Or is it just for, I just want to gather some content and not apply it. It's, um, for me, that, that's not empowering enough. So... Um, COVID-19 is dealing with our senses and so you have to sanitize your senses if you want to sanitize anything sanitize your senses so that you can through <laughs> I don't know what you use as sanitize but through the fault of what you believe let the sanitizer be a filter for you thank you thank you guys Beautiful. Like Dr. Kim says, beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ambassador Marsha from You're the welcome. other hemisphere. Okay, so what I got from what you said was choose. We have the ability to choose what we focus on. We have the ability to choose whether we're going to focus on the, you know, the good, the pure, the clean, the stuff that's going to help us to move forward in our businesses, projects, or endeavors, or we can focus and choose to look at the things that are holding us back and pulling us down and causing us fear. There's that ugly word. And then you said the way to do it is to sanitize our senses. I love that. Somebody needs to type that in the chat. So it'll be in the recorder, in the record sanitize our senses, cleanse our senses so that we can have peace. Because if we have that peace, then we can move forward and then we can be successful, whether it's um, putting together the website um, or whether it's with um, Kasha building the business. So wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that and growth of application and empowerment. I love that. That's exactly what we need, growth of application, the action, the activity of doing the things that we're talking about. Because with the mastermind, it's beautiful if we sit and we listen to all these great thoughts, but if we don't apply it, which is what Ambassador Marsha is saying, then our time here is not fulfilling. So everybody that's listening on 
Facebook or YouTube. The idea is to apply the content so that the mastermind is truly being utilized. Okay, beautiful. Kasha, do you have anything to share? Or Dennis, do you have anything to share on the topic? You know what, um, when it comes to sanitizing our senses, I think that's a wonderful way to create a shift of view to have a different matter of perception. Beautiful. Dennis is saying shift our perception. Yes. If we're focusing on the, the negative stuff, we need to sanitize and shift our perception. Because if all we're seeing is the good, the pure, the clean, the business, the project, that it's growing and people are coming on and they're speaking and they're sharing and we're being uplifted, then that's where our energy is going and that's where the energy is expanding. So before you go, I'd love for you to, to share with us, Kasha, your take on this. Well, first of all, I, uh, I really, um, I learned in recent years that um, you know, uh, really the energy that we focus on, it really is manifesting uh, right. uh, our health. So, mm. so I do not own a channel TV. So I do, I do not feed myself with, with the narrative. First of all, that's my choice. So I'm sanitizing my, my environment. <laughs> Uh, and uh, I'm not confusing myself with, uh, you know, time replacements. You know, it's like, you know, like in politics or in life, people can choose subjects that they are consuming your time for something that mm, just take the time away from you, period. Not, not, and I'm not saying that you always have to be productive, but being... Uh, less than productive or less than zero productive it might be you know consuming your brain and then taking you away from your own reality and um with uh, with what uh, uh ambassador marsha uh, was saying i really love your messages and you know you can do simple things instead of watching tv and feeding yourself fear and that fear will affect your health and perhaps you will get the flu or COVID or whatever it is, or you will get your pain in your neck or you will get your lungs uh, or your whatever going on with you. It's really all connected. Energy is drilling and then, you know, composing and, and creating either happiness or issues or challenges. So if we, let's say I have an idea like this, go to the store, buy a flower in the in the pot a plastic pot go buy the beautiful uh, ceramic pot bring it home and try to you know feed it water it look at this talk to the flower uh, look how it's growing how it's blooming and that's when you will replace the fear from tv or some other things into the energy that will build your confidence will build your happiness and will build, you know, everything that is positive. And then, you know, your mind will be not filled up with that fear, but you will, you will really create your own magic, your own environment, fill your environment with those senses, with something that it's gonna feed your soul instead of draining your soul, instead of making yourself, uh, uh, you know, ill. And, um, First of all, you have so many powers. We have so many powers. I, this is my first power. You see this? That's what I do. I lick my finger and I show this is your powerful finger. And with this finger, you, you go on your phone or your computer or your uh, tablet. And this is your magic, ma magic finger. You either go to feed yourself or kill yourself in the in the fear mode, okay? Then you have an, another magic uh, tool, which is also your finger, but it, that it ha could be done without, without the finger. You, do, you either give the knowing consent to something to, to enter your bubble of your energy or your environment, or you say, no, I don't want it. I do not invite this to my world. 
I don't want to get sick. I'm not interested in this or that. I'm interested in building my joy, my confidence, my happiness, whatever, you know, uh, will make you smile and want to get up next day. There are so many people and I, myself included uh, in the past, when I was drowning myself constantly, uh, you know, uh, diving into the past because so many things happened to me in the past. And, you know, finally I found a way to, uh, to, not, to do not do it to myself. Finally, I'm saying, no, I'm not doing this to myself. I'm going to feed myself with only good and positive and surround myself with people that they can help me to, to go higher, to be happier, despite what's going on around. And I'm not saying I'm, I'm unrealistically not knowing what's going on in the political arena. I do. I do check that stuff, uh, stuff daily, but I disconnect. I'm just checking to know what's, what's there. But I'm choosing and inviting into my daily and my energy bubble to my aura, to my life. I'm choosing what I want to, what I'm saying, yes, come here. And what I don't want to, I'm saying no. And that's how simple it is to get started with this journey. Thank you so much. Make a decision. Make a decision. It's like, I like this. I don't like that. I like this. I don't like that. And it's not just, you know, you have to create the paper and draw the line. And, you know, when you get married, like, you know, why this boy is good and why it's not. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Lady Kasia. Um, our time is far spent. It's 11 o'clock. I don't know where the time goes. I hate that it goes so quickly. Um, we love to um, have people say what they're going to do this week in order to move forward. If you have to get off, you have to click off because it's 11 o'clock. I completely understand. For those of you that want to share the one activity that you're going to do before for this week, go ahead and let us know so we can hold you accountable. And then we're going to sign off. So what's the one thing you're going to do this week? For your business to move forward or your project or your endeavor go ahead who wants to go first okay ambassador what are you going to do this week <laughs> to help your business move forward or your project or endeavor um i'm i'm moving to dubai this week so i'm officially doing business full-time officially full-time in business yes so where are you now um i'm in abu dhabi which is 45 minutes away from dubai um yeah but i'll be in dubai um and yes full time beautiful -time. okay so her project is movement she's gonna make that move yes movement yeah and work in her business exclusively, as opposed to business and job. That is a major, major, major project. Awesome. Lady Kasia, what's the project that you're going to work on this week? We well, can this week, I think the most important is to stay aligned and stay focused on, on good. And again, invite just the positive into my life to, to be, so I will be able to feed our, other people the, the, the positive and teach them and show them the way if they are a little bit behind, kind of like, you know, maybe they are, you know, a few steps when, when, where I, and when I was before. And then another project is just to, you know, uh, I'm uh, working on our next celebration that will be on uh, September 23rd. So I'm working with uh, some people, inviting them to the call for the vault celebration. So that's my main focus right now. Vault celebration and to invite positive into your life, maintain your positive persona Absolutely. so that you can give it out and other people can give it back. With my <laughs> With yeah. my magic finger, Thank I'm you, going to stick to magic by design. Thank you. Magic by design. Beautiful. Dennis, what are you going to do this week that you'd like for us to help to hold you accountable for? All right. Um, well, for me, I would like to um, do some extra editing uh, to the poetry book, uh, Conscious Food for Thought. 
and I would like to um, get the cover art um, uh, delivered. Beautiful. Okay, so Dennis is working on his book this week. He's doing some editing. So by the next week when you come back, we're gonna ask you about that. Hopefully you'll be able to give us some sort of victory story on that. And I'm going to share that um, this week, I am going to invite more people to participate with me and my various ventures. One of the ventures is a speaking course that I have to help people to be more confident with their speaking ability. I have to actually invite people to, to join that and also invite people to um, be part of the mastermind group. So thank you so much everybody for signing on today. I love you all. You are the greatest. Thank you for holding us each accountable and I'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank you, bye. Have a wonderful day. <laughs>